Hello, this is learning plan four, ladder logic fundamentals. In this learning plan, our objectives are state the basic rules that determine how and where two or more loads are connected into a control circuit. State the basic rules that determine how and where two or more switches are connected into a control circuit. Add line number references to any given control circuit drawn in line ladder diagram format. Add a numerical cross-reference system to any given control circuit drawn in line, ladder, diagram format. Add wire reference numbers to any given control circuit drawn in line, ladder, format. Explain how to add manufacturer's terminal numbers. Draw a control circuit showing how additional stop switches can be connected in a control circuit, as well as start switches. Draw a control circuit showing how two motors can be started almost simultaneously. Draw a control circuit showing how a pilot light is used with a pressure switch to indicate device activation, how a pilot is used with a start-stop station to indicate device activation. Draw a control circuit showing how a selector switch is used to provide a common industrial jog-slash-run circuit. So for this lesson, we're mainly going to be talking about line diagrams. So the rules that we talk about in this apply only to line diagrams, not necessarily wiring diagrams or pictorial diagrams. Um, also, you should know that the prints that you will see in your workplace may be different from what we discuss in this lesson. However, the principles still apply. So there's always going to be differences in prints that you're reading, but you're going to see some similarities. And principles most oftentimes always apply. So let's get started. No more than one load should be placed on any circuit line between L1 and L2. So only one load per line. Never draw it like this. If you need to have two loads controlled by the same push button, you would put them in parallel, meaning a branch circuit around this other load. Control relay coils, solenoids, and pilot lights are loads that are connected directly or indirectly to L2. So CR1 is connected directly to L2, solenoid, pilot light directly to L2. Motor starter coils, remember we talked about this in the previous lesson, have overload contacts that are connected between the load and L2. Control devices are always on the left in a standard ladder diagram. Control devices meaning your push buttons, limit switches, pressure switches. They'll be on the left. Your loads will be on the right. Two control devices can be connected in series or parallel to control a coil in a magnetic motor starter. In this situation, this top line, this flow switch and this temperature switch are connected in series. What that means is this flow switch must be closed to allow current to flow to the temperature switch, and the temperature switch must be closed to allow current flow to the motor starter. So essentially this and this must be closed for this to run. Below here is a parallel circuit. If I close this foot switch, current is allowed to flow to my motor starter. If I close this pressure switch, current is allowed to flow to my motor starter. So essentially this or this must be closed for this to run. Line numbering. So each line in a line diagram should be numbered starting with the top line and reading down. So numbers on the side here represent each line. These are important to, to reference to if you're troubleshooting a print. 
So one, two, three. The locations of normally open contacts controlled by a device are determined by the numbers on the right side of the line diagram. This is a little confusing sometimes. So remember we talked about auxiliary contacts in a previous lesson. This control relay essentially has auxiliary contacts. The locations of those auxiliary contacts are listed on the right side of the diagram. You can see this control relay has contacts on line 2, line 2, line 3, line 3, and line 4, line 4. So that's a cross-reference. When you have a normally closed contact, see on the previous slide they were all normally open contacts, but when you have a normally closed contact, they're indicated by numbers that are underlined to distinguish them from normally open contacts. So if we look at this one here, this M4 motor starter has a normally closed contact because you see the underline on line 13. M4, line 13. Each wire in a control circuit is assigned a reference point on a line diagram to keep track of the different wires that connect the components in the circuit. So each wire is assigned a specific number. Now the numbering system you see on the screen here is not going to correlate with anything you'd use in your workplace. But just know that there is a numbering system to keep track of wires as you install them in a machine. Okay, so we can just read this across. One, two, three. This is still one because electrically it's still the same point. Here is still the same as this. Current or electricity can flow here just as easy as it flows here. So this is still one. Anything attached to the power source has the same number. So four and again, three. It's attached to the power source. So whatever this first number ends up being is always going to be the same all the way down. Manufacturers include terminal numbers to identify and separate the different component parts included in individual piece of equipment. The numbers you see at the bottom of this control relay, two and ten, represent the actual terminals that you're connecting to with this wire and this wire. So wire number two goes to terminal number two on this control relay. Wire number three goes to terminal number ten on this control relay. Contacts found in different control lines that belong to the same control switch are illustrated using the dash line or numerical cross-reference method. So in previous lessons I mentioned that if you have a dash line that means they're physically connected. Same goes for here. These two contacts are physically connected to each other. So when this normally open contact changes, this normally closed contact changes as well. Another way to indicate that if the, if the components aren't right next to each other is putting an arrow with what rung number or line number the related component is on. So this is saying this pressure switch has a, com has a mating component, component on line 5. Line 5 this pressure switch has a mating component on line one. So line cross-reference, wire reference, and manufacturer's terminal numbers are used to simplify electrical prints. Make them easier to read. Make you, make your job easier to install in these components. Okay, when we talk about logic, these two push buttons are, are in a configuration called AND logic. This button and this button must be pushed to energize the solenoid. OR logic. 
this button or this temperature switch must be pressed to energize this heating element. Memory circuit. We talked about this in a previous lesson. A memory circuit uses auxiliary contacts from a motor starter or relay coil to keep itself energized. So when I push the start button, it's energized M1. When M1 is energized, closes its contacts. See M1? These contacts change their state, so this is normally open. It's got to be open close when it's energized. Now we have an alternate path current flow. I can let go of the start button. So two stop push buttons connected in series and two start buttons connected in parallel are used to control a motor from two locations. So we have two stop buttons here. See they're in series. So this stop button or this stop button could be pushed to de-energize the circuit. This start button or this start button could be pushed to energize the motor starter. Notice we have a latch here, memory, three-wire control. We have a contact here that when this motor starter energizes, we have an alternate path of current flow. So we have two start-stop stations, two motors, but we're using one common emergency start. This is very common in emergency start situation, or emergency stop, I'm sorry. So one emergency stop, when pushed, will break the path for both of these circuits, essentially shutting both of them down if they're running. Here's a circuit that shows you two motors simultaneous start from one location. So we have our three wire control circuit, our holding circuit, latching circuit, memory, whatever you want to call it. When I push the start button, motor one energizes, motor starter coil one, closes its normally open contacts. So it changes the state of any auxiliary contacts that are attached to it. So it closes this contact and it closes this contact, starting motor 2. Notice the cross-reference here. So M1 has contacts on lines 2 and 3. Pretty handy tools those cross-references are. So pilot light is used with a pressure switch to indicate when a device is activated. This is showing two loads that are in parallel. Whenever this motor starter coil is energized, so is this light, because they're both, they both have paths of current flow. So same circuit, only now we have a start-stop station instead of a pressure switch. So again, we have two paths of current flow. They're connected to each other, so when I push start, motor starter runs and pilot light illuminates. A sequence control circuit. This circuit is getting a little more complicated. It does not let the first conveyor operate unless the second conveyor has started and is running. So notice the first conveyor is here and then this is conveyor 2. So we have a common emergency stop. This emergency stop will break the circuit to both of these, essentially shutting both of them down. A start button has a path current flow going to here, energize this, okay, energizes motor one. See there's another path going to here through our stop to our start. We could actually energize, <coughs> excuse me, motor two if we held the start button, but we don't need to because when we push start, motor one energizes, closes its auxiliary contact. Now there's an alternate path of current flow, keeps itself energized, as well as giving our conveyor one circuit 
a path as well. Push this start, motor 2 energizes, latch, keeps itself going. Now we have a conveyor system that's running. To jog, a jo common jogging circuit is done with a selector switch. So selector switch, this is a two position switch, you can either have run or jog. Notice the two positions represented here. The jog position is represented with the dash lines. The run position is represented with solid lines. So when I push, when this is in the run position, there is a path of current here. So I push start, motor one energizes, there's a path through this selector switch to our contacts. So when this is energized, closes those contacts, keeps itself energized. Now let's see what happens. I flip it over to the jog position. The jog position is not in contact with these dots here. So when I push my start button, current flows to my motor starter. This contact does close, however, it doesn't have any current flowing through it. So it cannot latch itself. That is the end of learning plan four. Thank you. We'll see you next time.